I knew I had a problem with smoking pot, drinking, but I didn't realize that I was, that, you know, I had no control over it. Um, you know, and I remember being in the hospital saying, as soon as I get out of here, I mean, that's it. I'm, I'm going to recover and I'm going to get better. And, and um, but as soon as I got home, I had pot at home as soon as I got home. And I had every intention of throwing it out. I smoked it, you know, and, and uh, so for the next four years, it was really just drugs and alcohol. Um, you know, and again, I didn't know it then, but it was the only way that I could cope with um, anything. Uh, I couldn't, I, I had no idea that the abuse affected me so bad. And I had PTSD and I had, it was like to, the panics that I would have revolved around the drugs and the alcohol or lack thereof. So if I started to run out or come, become short, I had to get in touch with my dealer right away so I can get what I needed so I can get high. Um, I get this out of the blue call from the DA's office that he was um, arrested for child abuse of like, they had him for like three other kids, you know, doing the same, exact same kind of thing that he did with me. He'd lower arm, he'd say he got this, you know, he was involved with all these like teen kind of help teen kind of stuff. And we want you to come, come and talk to you you know, can you come in and talk to us? So I go in there and, um, and um, there was this DA um, and another DA there and they started asking me about, you know, we know about you from the past and all this kind of stuff and we're looking to establish a pattern of behavior with this, with this guy and, um, you know, and I didn't realize that they wanted to have me testify. So they're talking to me and, um, and I'm answering their questions and um, I just, they, they then came out with it. You know, we'd like you to come testify. And, the, and what we can do is in the, cause I said, well, why would you want, cause that's past, that's over. I'm done with that. I'm over that. I, you know what I mean? Like. I thought I was, that was like ancient history, you know? So they said, well, what we'd like to do is, and, and what we're allowed to do is show a pattern of behavior with someone who's a pedophile, um, to show the similarities of what happened to you with what happened, what has happened with these three new uh, victims. And I was like, yeah, all right, okay, I'll do that, <laughs> you know. But then I said to them, which was completely out of, out, of, out of the left field, I said, but I need to tell you that I'm an addict. You know, and because inside of me, I was thinking to myself, I have to use, I have to get high all the time. You know, there's a, a line from the movie Drugstore Cowboy, with Matt Dillon, it's a great movie. And he talks about that he had to get high to tie his shoes. And I relate to that. So I just told him, I said, I, you know, I have to, I get, you know, I'm an addict, you know, and I get high, you know, because I knew that I'd have to be high to be able to do that, you know? And so, and he says, well, just make sure you don't smoke any pot that day, you know? And I said, all right, okay, you know? But inside, I'm, I'm saying to him, okay, but inside I'm saying, there's no way, there's no way, <laughs> you know? And so, I'm walking out the door, I, you know, I said, okay, well, you know, we'll do that, you know. 
and uh, I'm walking out the door to my car, and it was that moment, that, that walk between the office and my car, that all of a sudden I knew what you were talking about. I understood why I was using all that. I understood why I was using all those years. And it was, he didn't want me to have to deal with it. He wanted me to forget it. He wanted me to blow it off. Uh, and, uh, and I never could understand, well, why, why can't I stop? smoking and and I wanted to stop I didn't like it um, I never liked it um, but it was something that I had to do and it was at that moment that I knew and then all of a and I realized that I can't let this guy control me like that all of a sudden I realized that he was controlling me all that time for nine years, I was controlled by that guy from 14 to 23. And I realized that I, I couldn't let him do that to me anymore. It was, like a, it was like a revelation, right? But at the same time, I was so conditioned to being numb for so long that, that it was like I couldn't really Process it, process it on a feelings level. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And uh, so, but I knew what it was. And so I went to a meeting. I went to an AA meeting. And, um, and, uh, and I remember all the, all the years and the times that I had tried to, that I'd say, okay, this is it, I'm gonna stop. And, and uh, I never could. And I went home after the meeting. I had, the le I had pot, I, had, I drank a couple of beers, I got high, and that was the last time I ever used. And, um, and what was interesting about it, it was, the, it was the one time that I didn't plan on it. I never planned it, uh, and uh, and then my buddy, his mother, was in already AA for like 15, 16 years, and I asked her to sponsor me, and she. Um, and I remember saying, do you think I need to go to treatment? And she said, no, you just go to meetings, but I'm gonna get you in touch with someone who deals with sexual abuse. So I, um, uh, her name is Karen Spessard, um, and my sponsor's name, her name's Maggie Hubner. And um, she, so, so basically my recovery started then. And then the actual testifying in court came about. Was and what was amazing about it was I was scared to death, <laughs> but I brought all these people that I knew from meetings. I had my family there. It was like I was in a meeting, but I was in a courtroom. And, uh, and you know, the defense attorney, he was a real, you know, uh, he had these beady eyes and he would sit in front of my parents to mess with my nerves and you know and he would ask you can call him an asshole it's okay yeah <laughs> and, and, you, he, and you'll edit it out if necessary yeah <laughs> and he would you know I mean he you know he came out with the you know you kept going back to see him right and and he was your friend right and you know like he was doing doing those kinds of questions you know but uh, the DA said, don't worry about whatever he says because I'll always have the opportunity to come back and redirect you. And 
he told me about, he came, <laughs> I'm already getting teary about this because, but he, he, <laughs> and I don't remember what the line of questioning was that led up to it, but he said, you know, you've been clean now, right? Since you found out about doing this? I said, yeah, and he says, how long have you been clean now? And I said, and I had to think about it, but it was 10 months and four days. And yeah, I can remember, like all the people from the meetings, they all wanted like, you could feel that they wanted to start clapping like, like it was in a meeting, you know? But I remember I, I peered over at the defense attorney and his head just kind of like went down, like he knew he was screwed, <laughs> you know? And it was, um, it was an amazing experience, you know? It was an amazing experience.